the fact that you didn't want to fulfill the exchange program and didn't want to get back? Well, I was locked up in the, inside the Chinese consulate in Houston for over 21 hours. Four guards came to drag me away, uh, locked me up in this room inside the consulate. Uh, I really thought at that moment I, my, my life would be lost that night. I was never going to live through that evening uh, and uh, I was never going to be able to see my family ever again. Were you frightened that you could be tortured or kidnapped or what were you fearing of? Well, I was kidnapped uh, and uh, I, I thought worse than torture. I thought you were going to take a gun and shoot me. I really thought that and because when they shut the door, uh, when they locked me in this room, the two guards, I heard them talking, they said they are going to kill me that night. So then I, I mentally prepared for the worst and I eventually uh, made peace with myself. I thought if, if I had to die, then I, at least I died with something I believed. In the end, you were able to leave the Chinese consulate and to remain in the US, but nevertheless, you were told um, you were never allowed to come back to China, never to see your family again, which, as far as I know, is one of the worst things one can tell to a Chinese. How could you support this verdict to be in exile forever? It was, the, it was probably the lowest moment of my life. It was the darkest moment of my life when I realized as long as I lived, I could never see my family, never be able to help them, um, which was my, my biggest dream, secret wish, to be able to maybe change my parents' and my brothers' lives to help them. So when I realized I, may, I will be completely cut off from them forever, uh, I, uh, I really felt part of me have died. And uh, uh, so um, it was it, those years of uh, separation from them was the worst time of my life. But I, uh, every time when the thought or the hope uh, was about to die to be able to see them, but I tried to revive them. I, I didn't, I, well, I was hopeful maybe with China changing, I would eventually be able to see my parents and to see my brothers one day. And how did you manage to get them over the Pacific Ocean? It was a miracle. When I was dancing in Washington DC, I was dancing the Prince in Swan Lake and then two days before the opening night of my performance, Barbara Bush, who was on the board of the Houston Ballet, invited my director and I to the White House for coffee. It was during that meeting she learned about my difficulties with China and then she helped. She invited the Chinese ambassador and the coach attaché to see me dance in Swan Lake and that was the night of the Bushes, Vice President Bush and Barbara Bush asked the Chinese guests if they could help me. It was only then that the Chinese government eventually gave my parents the permission to, to visit me in America. And it was a magical moment when I saw them. Of course they came to see me dance as well. So the White House even and high diplo diplomacy mingled into your case to solve your problems. Uh, well, you have made a considerable career in the U.S., first as a dancer, but as we all know, dancing is something one cannot do for a lifetime. Um, when did you realize that you had to change, that your dance career was physically limited, and uh, what did you decide to do afterwards? Yeah, when I was 35, uh, I'm, uh, I joined the Australian Ballet as a principal dancer there, the national company there. And at that time I realized that my career was not going to go on forever. I have to really be realistic planning my life after dance. So I realized that I have my family of three children, young children to support, and also I have to support my parents and six brothers in China. So I knew just teaching and coaching dancing was never going to be able, allow me to do that. So I have to study, re-educate myself, start to re-educate myself, to study finances. So when I danced uh, and I studied, 
And so, of course, a lot of late evenings, weekends, holiday times, I keep on study, study. So I, I want to be prepared when I finish my dancing career, and I'm ready to move into a different area, which will allow me to make enough money to help people I love and I care. So eventually, before I even finished my dancing career, I was offered a wonderful job by one of the biggest investment banks in Australia, which uh, I took it and I danced and did stop working for over a year. So you had a very smooth transition. Uh, congratulations. Nevertheless, uh, why did you choose stockbroking? I mean, it seems to me miles away from the art world of dance. But I thought to myself, maybe you know, to teach or coach ballet or do something around the art field would be a comfortable thing for me to do. Would be an easy career transition because I'm familiar. I know the the profession. But I felt life was too short to just choose something safe. I thought, thought I have to challenge myself. I have to have courage to do something totally different. Because again, the freedom uh, that I have in, in, in the Western world allowed me to do whatever I wanted to do as long as I work hard. I have to do it with passion. So eventually I thought, well, what could possibly make allow me to make enough money to support my two families? And, uh, and uh, I, I was fascinated with the financial world, which I knew nothing about. So I thought, well, that's not a bad place to start. I see. Um, so. Uh